Classical computers use binary zeros and ones to store and process their data. Quantum computers, on the other hand, use qubits or quantum bits, which can be zero and one at the same time. We have all heard this explanation of quantum computers, but what does that actually mean? In order to understand what a quantum computer is actually doing, we must look at how we represent them mathematically. Instead of using binary, like classical computers, quantum computers use qubits. Physically, a qubit can be any quantum particle that exists in two distinct states, such as a photon of light being polarised either horizontally or vertically. Just like classical computers, we still use zeros and ones, but in quantum computation, we define them instead as the column vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1, respectively. The weird brackets around 0 and 1 is Dirac notation. We will look more into it later. You may have heard of the term superposition. What it means in quantum mechanics is that a quantum particle is in two states at the same time. So back to our photon polarization example, this means that the photon is both horizontally and vertically polarized at the same time. In terms of quantum computing, we say a qubit is in superposition if it is both 0 and 1 at the same time. Let's look at how we represent qubits mathematically. Mathematically, we can represent a qubit as a column vector with two elements. The top element indicates how much the qubit is in the zero state, and the bottom element indicates how much the qubit is in the one state. The convention for a quantum state is to set it equal to the Greek letter psi. We'll talk more about this in the next video. So if we have a qubit in the state one zero, it now makes sense why this is zero since it is all in the zero state and none in the one. We can say the same for a qubit in the state zero one being one. If a qubit is in both the zero and one state, so it has non-zero numbers in the matrix, then we say it is in a superposition of zero and one, since it is both of the states at the same time. So now we know how to represent a qubit mathematically, but how do we measure the qubits? For that, we must look at another rule of quantum mechanics. When we measure a quantum system, it changes the state of the system to the measurement. What does that mean? If we go back to our photon polarization example, if the photon is in a superposition of both horizontally and vertically polarized, then when we measure it, we will only measure it as one or the other, but not both. And once it has been measured, it collapses into the state we measured. So if it was in a superposition and we measure it to be horizontally polarized, it would collapse and become horizontally polarized, meaning it is not in a superposition anymore. The same thing happens when we measure qubits. We can only measure a zero or a one. We do not measure how much the qubit is in the zero state, or how much the qubit is in the one state. Immediately after measuring a qubit, its state changes to either zero or one, depending on the measurement. So what is the point in those numbers telling us how much the qubit is in the zero state or the one state? What those numbers tell us is the probability of measuring a zero or a one. The probability of measuring zero is the magnitude squared of the amplitude of the zero state, and the probability of measuring one is the magnitude squared of the amplitude of the one state. So for this example qubit, when we measure it, we have a 75% chance of measuring a zero, and a 25% chance of measuring a one. If we now think about how we defined the zero and one state at the start of the lesson, they should now start to make sense. We stated that zero was the column vector one zero, and now we can see why. The probability of measuring zero is one, so it will always be measured as zero. This is the same for the one state. Since there are only two possible outcomes when measuring a qubit, the probability of measuring a zero plus the probability of measuring a one must equal one, giving us this equation. So this would be a valid qubit state, since the probabilities add up to one. But this would not be, since the probabilities add up to more than one. When we do measure a qubit that is in superposition, it collapses into the measured state. So if we measure this state to be zero, it collapses into the zero state, so every measurement after will be zero. This is because of the laws of quantum mechanics. When we measure something, it permanently changes the state of the system to that measurement. 